Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me for the very first uh, of our business career week. And today is um, our resume lab, which actually we hold every Monday at 1 PM. Um, but today is special as part of our business uh, career week. So thanks for joining um, for throughout this session. I it would be great if everyone can just go ahead and mute your mic. I'm going to go ahead and um, do a little resume review. My name is Sue Langelina. I am from obviously the business career development office right on the Yukon Stores campus. And I also work in the Hartford office as well, Hartford campus as well. So today our student group, our student organization that we're being joined with is by Ascend, hoping that we do have a few of you folks here. If you wanna wave and just let me know if you're from Ascend, that would be great. Or if your camera is off, uh, you can put it out there in the chat. But one of your colleagues has kindly gone ahead and provided me with um, a copy of her resume. And we're gonna go ahead and utilize that resume as part of our um, preview and review for today. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So uh, our resume today was provided by Willow Yang. And um, frankly, to be perfectly honest with you, there's uh, generally I go ahead and provide an overview and I, I like to tell people that it's a review, it's not a critique. I think most people get uh, a little unnerved by that and feel as though uh, that the word critique is more or less of a negative. So I'll tell you that for my process, this is really a review. Um, and I like to talk to students about their resume when I'm doing this resume lab is if I'm a recruiter and provide you with information that I think would be beneficial for any job uh, that you um, are applying for or internship. With that being said, one of the things I like to point out is that uh, this is your resume. You need to own it. Um, it is a situation where depending upon what you're applying for and where you're applying, obviously the content of the resume might possess some additional or different information. But overall, this is a Western style business resume that we're gonna go ahead and review for today. And it is for entry level positions. So as you progress throughout your career, your resume is gonna grow along with you. Um, and so without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So obviously in the very beginning, uh, the title of this particular, or the header is, this is Willow's resume. If you notice, she's indicated that she's from Latham, New York, no longer necessary for you to go ahead and put down your permanent mailing address. A little bit of a safety feature, to be perfectly honest with you, that the pandemic has uh, shared with us. Uh, you know what? If somebody really wants to know what your permanent mailing address is, they can go ahead and Google you. But for purposes of this, you're going to be uploading your resume in many, many different formats. So it's just perfectly appropriate for you to go ahead and put down your city and state along with your zip code. Obviously, you wanna go ahead and utilize your Yukon email. And for this, this is part of your branding, right? Totally appropriate for you to go ahead and, and utilize your Yukon email. Employers want Yukon students, so go ahead and utilize that. Uh, the phone number, uh, 123, obviously 456-789. She has done this as a sample, just so that you can see that. So this is not being shared with her uh, phone number out there. And obviously her LinkedIn. Um, for those of you who have an established LinkedIn, this is where it should go at the header of your resume. So under your education, uh, feel free if anyone has any questions at any point in time as we, as we process through this. If you notice for Willow, she's gone right in through her education. There are some of you who may choose to go ahead and utilize an objective, totally appropriate if you choose to do that. But in a situation where you're actually uploading your resume, Again, folks are knowing that you're applying to one, two, three, four, five, but if you do choose to use an objective on your resume, one of the things I want to make sure you're aware of is no personal pronouns. This is where you really need to tell the reader three strong skill sets that you um, have identified that you can bring to the table. Uh, you need to tell the reader what you can do for them. So in other words, if you do use an objective, here's where it would say, uh, seeking an internship uh, in accounting, utilizing, 
what strong three, what three skill sets would you indicate? Uh, analytical skills, effective communication, strong leadership. Again, tell that reader three skills that you can bring to the table for them. So once you've established whether or not you need or want to use an objective, totally appropriate at this point is to go ahead and indicate your education. University of Connecticut, Stores, Connecticut. For this instance, it's a Bachelor of Science in Business, comma, major, just the way Willow has it laid out. I happen to be a strong proponent of the area where you go ahead and your dates are right justified on the right hand side. You don't need to indicate what your start date is. What you were writing here is what your graduation date is. Personal pet peeve, just for you folks. Don't put anticipated, be strong. You're gonna go ahead and graduate. Anticipated sounds like it might not happen. You're gonna graduate May, 2023. So go ahead and put that on there. In this case, Willow uh, happens to be a dual major. So uh, not, not for everyone, but if you notice, it's a Bachelor of Science in Business. And then for Chinese, Mandarin Chinese, she's receiving a Bachelor of Arts. And this is, in fact, just the way it would be written. Bachelor of Science in Business, her major is Accounting, Bachelor of Arts in Chinese, uh, and her major it is Mandarin Chinese. For cumulative GPA, it will be matched digit per digit. So if you are writing that you have a 3.9999, uh, you're gonna write at a 4.000. So just be mindful of that and just make sure that you utilize the information uh, regarding your cumulative GPA. For some folks, they're gonna go ahead and not write cumulative. For some of you, you may choose to just put your, your major GPA totally appropriate. Um, and then in this section, not necessary, honors and awards, right? This is where you would list out Dean's list, just the way uh, Willow has it written here. Some folks will tell you that the Dean's list has to be written in chronological order with the most recent uh, first, and then go back in the other direction. To be perfectly honest with you, it's it's, not going to matter to be honest it's how it's read if you're utilizing an applicant tracking system honors programs academic excellence so anything that is academically related at this particular point in time can go under your education header any questions any comments anything that anyone has that they feel free to go ahead and shout it out now any of my colleagues have any information that they'd like to share as well perfectly okay So for me, to be perfectly honest with you, um, from a recruiter standpoint, this is definitely a subject to opinion, but I like to see the skill set next, right? And for, for, for me, the skills are all the way down here at the bottom, but as an employer, I would like to know what you're gonna bring to the table and what skill set you would bring. So I would suggest to Willow that she would go ahead and move her skill set un under education. Now, again, I say this with a caveat, this is yours. You need to own this and it needs to be totally appropriate. Uh, you need to feel comfortable with it. I like to see what the skill set is. So I'm gonna say skills should be in your next area. And let's look at what Willow has uh, listed here. So under here, she has uh, language and computer. Now remember, she is a dual major and Mandarin Chinese is in fact one of her majors. You also might want to think about what your employer wants to see on your resume. So if they want to know that you have a strong computer background, you might want to list computer first. If it is in fact a situation where they want to know that you're already Bloomberg certified, go ahead and make sure that you have your certifications listed first and you can list Bloomberg certified and move on from there. So language, con conversational Mandarin Chinese. One of the things that I like to point out for students is that most of you all graduated from high school having to know a second language. It's totally appropriate for you to indicate. You, you don't have to say that you are fluent, but if you are conversational in Spanish, totally appropriate for you to indicate conversational. If you ha um, have written, and verbal comprehension in another language, in Italian, in Spanish, in Portuguese, go ahead and put that on there. Um, I, 
no one is indicating that you have to indicate that you're proficient. If that is how you would like to go ahead and list it, if in fact you are proficient in a second language or a third language, that is how it would be written. So, uh, um, computer, let's talk about this a little bit. There's always a little bit of a question here for many students. They'll indicate that uh, social media, totally appropriate for you to put it on here. If you're a marketing major, let's talk about that. Almost every employer out there wants to know what your social media background is, but you have to be mindful of it, right? If you are proficient in, yeah, maybe you are a blogger, maybe you've created multiple websites, all of those platforms need to go on uh, within computer. Um, your basic Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint, and Word, have to say this, it does have to be listed out because here's the, the situation. If you were just to go ahead and indicate that you um, know Microsoft, you know, Office, there's many platforms within Microsoft Office and you might not be proficient in all of them, but if it's Excel, PowerPoint, Word, list everything out, Google Sleep, Sheets, Slides, Docs, all of that can be written on here. So any platform that you've utilized within um, computer, obviously we just had a, um, an employer on talking specifically about, you know, different software platforms that they are looking for on a resume. Again, if in fact, you know, Python, put that on here. Um, I, I think that oftentimes what I find in basic conversation with students is most everybody's pretty humble. Um, and it's hard to write about yourself on one sheet of paper. Um, but as an employer, if I was looking, this is all information. This is the skill set that I want to know that you can bring to the table. So don't shortchange yourself. So the one area that's not on here that I would suggest, and we talked about it briefly, is your certifications. So if you're Bloom, Bloomberg certified, this is where it's going to go. If you have received a badge within, um, even any any of the programs within LinkedIn, um, this is, any certifications from there, it would all go under certifications. If you're CPR certified, put this on here. More often than not, students will ask me why any information like CPR certified would go on here if it's not directly related to your major. All of those things are transferable skills. It shows leadership. Um, you had to attend a program and and become certified in that. So definitely don't shortchange yourself, put down any certifications that you have and don't leave them off from your resume. So again, my thought process would be that you would wanna go ahead and move your skill set up to the top uh, after your education, but again, entirely up to you how you would go ahead and put that information on here. So your work experience would be next. Different ways that you could title this, if in fact you wanted it to be relevant work experience, if, if you have um, had an, um, an internship that is completely relevant to your major and you would like to highlight that, it could be labeled relevant work experience and then any additional work experience underneath of that, it would be totally appropriate for you to go ahead and, and add this. I'm sorry that I am having all of these pop-ups. Hope you're not seeing those, but. Um, so, for this particular instance, the University of Connecticut School of Business, so if you notice what you actually need to write here is in fact the location and the city and the state of where your work experience started. And you do need to put down the months and the year, and in this case, let's talk about it, it's to present, so it's current. So, uh, Willow works as a student administrative assistant in the University of Connecticut School of Business stores. So, student administrative assistant, assistant. So, when you're creating your bullet statements, action statements, whatever you choose to call them, to be mindful of one of the things that you want to be mindful about is to tell your reader because you're creating these for someone else to read, and they have to be able to obtain the information and of what you did in this position. So what you need to tell your reader is, what did you do? How did you do it and why? So Willow says that she provi provides academic and administrative assistance for students and advisors by organizing emails, relevant documents, and et cetera. So I know Willow is not on this call, but for me, one of the things that I would point out is, is that don't use 
uh, an abbreviation like etc on your resume, you need to really tell that reader what it is and how did you organize them? Did you organize your, those emails and relevant documents utilizing Excel? Um, did you put them into a filing cabinet? Were these hard documents? So realistically, again, tell your reader, what did you do? How did you do it and why? So the next area is University of Connecticut School of Business Summer Orientation Peer Advisor. So if you notice in this instance, uh, Willow did this from May 2021 to July 2022. Her dates are all lined up on the right hand side. Like I said, right hand justified. A lot of people will go ahead and choose to go ahead and put the dates over on the left. There's nothing wrong with it, but one of the things is, is that you do want your resume to be aesthetically appealing to your reader. And if you have a lot of white space on the right hand side, it's not very appealing. I happen to be a proponent of the right hand justified for the dates, totally up to you. Again, you need to own it. So in this case, as a summer orientation peer advisor, University of Connecticut residential life, honors, resident assistant. Let's talk about this. She quantified some of this information. So if you see here, She's still doing this. She started it in August 2020. These are all going to be listed in chronological order. So, would you move this up? Would you keep it where it is? Because she started it in 2020, but she's still currently doing it the August 2021. This one was May 20. So, if you start these in chronological order, the difference is, is that she's still doing this one. Would she choose to keep it and move it up to the top? And nothing wrong with it. Just want to make sure that you're aware of that, right? Pointing that out. So honors, honors resident assistant promote 38 residents growth by supervising floor dynamics and connecting residents to relevant resources. Quantified some of the information here. Actively collaborate with supervisors and 16 staff members. Again, quantified some of this information in order to plan engaging events, ensure building safety, and foster a sense of community within the residence halls. Something tells me that this might have been part of the job description. Hot tip, everyone go back and look at what your job descriptions are for the positions that you currently possess. And that will assist you in the creation of your uh, action statements, bullet statements moving forward. So what did you do? How did you do it and why? Well, what, what she did and does is uh, actively collaborate with supervisors and 16 staff members in order to plan engaging events, ensure building safety and foster a sense of, and why is she doing it? It fosters a sense of community within the residence hall. So it gives the reader a really nice overview. One of the things that might be missing here that you might want to consider adding could be, you know what, all of this can't very well do that without extensive leadership or effective communication. So add those keywords. I'm sure that every job description out there, look at those keywords to incorporate some of those into those bullet statements. So for the next one, she has TJ Maxx. I didn't see what Kathy's response was. <laughs> so I'll go back to that in just a moment. Uh, TJ Maxx, Latham, New York, seasonal sales associate. So in this particular is instance, she has not written anything in here to indicate that she is still of what the position is that she does here. Would I want to know that? She's an accounting major. Uh, something tells me that she probably handles cash and credit card sales. One of the things you might want to consider as an accounting major, major is that maybe part of her little bullet statement could indicate that she's responsible for all uh, cash and credit card sales. Um, at the opening of and closing of each shift, ensuring financial accuracy, not only for the employer, but also for the customer, right? There's two pieces of that. If she was a marketing major, maybe this could be something that she talks about. Um, I'm sure as a sales associate, right? She certainly has to do 
um, some stocking or some inventory con control. And one of the things to think about is that all of those things use a point of sale system or use some sort of computerized system. Whew, that computerized system should go under um, computer software programs that you're familiar with and that you know how to utilize. So I would indicate to Willow that she should go ahead and put a sales, uh, put something underneath of this. She's worried about space and she feels as though it's not completely relevant to her, her major. Um, she could completely remove it, but I will say something that some that uh, folks go ahead and look at throughout the, excuse me, throughout the presentation or throughout the resume is that she's been doing this since 2018. So this also means that she probably worked through COVID, so that could be, or through the pandemic, so that could be another thing to highlight, shows leadership um, and shows commitment. So totally up to you as to whether or not you would keep that information. So the next area for, in this particular case would be leadership, and then she has it labeled also involvement. So an area where I oftentimes tell students that they could combine this information, the header could be leadership and volunteer engagement, leadership and volunteer activities. It provides you with the opportunity to go ahead and still highlight your leadership, which every employer out there wants. Um, and don't utilize the title extracurricular activities. Um, you know what, straight up, this is leadership. Um, and your volunteer engagement, whether or not it is within, you know, organizations that you belong to on campus that still is volunteering. So I would save yourself the space in this particular instance and write out leadership and volunteer experience all under one header. And these would be listed in chronological order as well. And definitely one of the things that I wanna pro pro point out here is the transition for, um, in this particular case, the um, the positions that she's held, right? So she started out as chapter secretary, uh, chapter vice president, and then chapter president. And it's a nice transition and it shows that leadership all the way through, but it really provides the dates so that me, the reader, I can look at that and say, hmm, this actually works. I see that she started out uh, in this position and transitioned and now is, is president of the organization. A nice way to to showcase uh, if, in fact, you show you hold leadership positions in organizations on campus. So, University of Connecticut Honors Program stores again in this particular instance. She's gone ahead and provided uh, some bullet statements here. Again, it's the same thing. What did you do? How did you do it? And why? Um, again, this is all leadership, straight up leadership, and then the involvement section. Uh, business leaders of UConn. One of the things I want to point out here, um, a lot of times students will say to me, I don't have any um, experience on my resume. How can I showcase things that I participated in, special project projects, special programs? Again, that could be moved up on your resume. And in this case, um, what, what Willow has done is indicated business leaders of Connecticut, excuse me, business leaders of UConn, and that she participated in a case competition and gone, she went ahead and provided the, the information. Um, but I think that you could showcase this in the very beginning of your resume as well. If, you, if in fact you feel as though you don't have content, um, you could take it out of your involvement or, or uh, leadership and volunteer experience. And it could be under its own header of special projects, special programs, UConn experience, and there you would go ahead and indicate any other case competitions that you participated in. The other thing that I want to point out is um, students will oftentimes uh, list out any kind of classwork that they've done. Excuse me, meaning when I don't, I don't mean class classwork. I mean classes. So I would say. This is an area where you want to make sure that it's upper level classes. You wouldn't want to list any more than six, but here's where you could showcase if in fact you're looking at a job description and you realize that they want someone that maybe has some experience in business law. 
but you took business law as you're an accounting major, but you took business law as uh, maybe one of your electives, you would want to go ahead and showcase that. And you could showcase any other classwork that you think classes, excuse me, that you think would be appropriate and, and required maybe within that job description. So in this case, um, the skills section, like I said, I would go ahead and move up to the top, but the interest section uh, is listed here, dancing, skiing, cooking, and music. This is always a big point of conversation for many students. If you have the space and you want to go ahead and put your interest section on here, totally appropriate. It does make the resume far more conversational uh, it does allow the recruiter to go ahead and see what some of your interests are and if they're reading a resume ahead of time. Uh, it allows them the opportunity to perhaps create some questions that would be relevant uh, to your interest section. But not everyone is comfortable with that. Totally appropriate. You can put your interest section on here if you want or you can leave it off. I happen to be, again, a proponent of it, but that's just because if you haven't been able to tell already, I like to talk and I do find it interesting and is a talking point for many, many individuals that I, I meet and speak with. So I, as an overview, if I always say to individuals, listen, if you didn't change a thing on your resume, there wouldn't be, there's nothing wrong with this. I, this is a great resume. Um, we always have room for improvement. There's always things that we can do to improve. You do need to remember that your resume each and every time uh, is really a work in progress for every single position that you um, apply to. It's gonna change just a little bit. It's a job looking for a job or an internship and keep track of where you apply. But I would indicate too that one of the things that maybe would be helpful is that you think of your resume overarching as a journal. And that every time you participate in something, you put it on your resume, don't think about the formatting of it, don't think about where it belongs, just write it down. So that when you do have to create that resume, you can go back to it and say, oh, look, I forgot that I participated in Husky Thon my freshman year, or I participated in the case competition as a freshman. That is information that oftentimes we just remember that we're gonna we're gonna write it down or we're gonna make sure that we put it on there. It's like our grocery list where we forget our grocery list and it stays on the kitchen table. Well, now we keep it on our phone, right? So think of your resume as the same thing. Go ahead and put the information on here. And then when you're ready to craft it, you can pick and choose what information will be appropriate for which job or which internship you're applying to. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen at this particular point in time. And I really wanna make sure, I think that there was something in the chat. And if anybody has any questions, anything that I'm missing, feel free to come off mute. And if you have a question for me, go ahead and put it right out there. Sherea, excited to be here. Yes, I was very happy that you're here as well. Looks like there's a great question there, Sue, from Ayana. All the way down at the bottom. You see, it says, she starts it with, this might be a stupid question, and there are no stupid questions. Absolutely not. Appropriate to note a task that you will complete in the future under work experience. For example, I am a communications public relations assistant for the Connecticut Institute of Water Resources, <laughs> and will be writing an article for an annual newsletter in April. Absolutely. So, um, Obviously, for certifications, anything like that that you um, are, are 
currently applying, you know, in, in process, it's totally appropriate for you to indicate in process. Um, if you're a blogger, that's, a, you know, it's to present, right? And I'm assuming this is a publication in April, and so you probably are currently writing it. So if you, a special project can be written to present, you could say when you started the project and it can say to present and or you know totally appropriate for you to indicate in process so it's a continuation right i mean i, I think we're all a work in progress in some way shape or form so that newsletter might might uh, might definitely be something that you're starting right now or have started and it will be published in april so in process it, or to present is total way for you to put it and yes to kathy's point no stupid questions does that answer <laughs> and there's another question from lauren and didn't hear the agenda is it an option for me to send my resume to be reviewed as well Absolutely. Lauren, actually, I think you and I have met before. And if you want to go ahead and share your resume, just know that there are other folks on the call and totally up to you as to whether or not you are comfortable to go ahead and have your resume reviewed right now. Live can happen. How can I make our bullet points stronger for clubs we are members for, but do not have a leadership role for and attend weekly meetings? Uh, that's a great question. Totally appropriate. Same, uh, you're going to go ahead and list the name of the organization, list the location of your club or membership, uh, excuse me, location of your club. So, and because of, I say that because we have, you know, meet with students that are from the Waterbury campus, there are students from Hartford campus, so that's how you would go ahead and list that. And then you would just list after, after that member. So, for some people, they have chosen to go ahead and provide a bullet statement as to what the club or membership actually does. Uh, not entirely necessary, but if you have um, if you have a bullet statement that you want to include, it's totally appropriate. If you have space, that's what I was trying to indicate is that if you have space, totally appropriate. Lauren, I also want to indicate that you can go ahead and make an appointment with any one of us for a resume review, totally appropriate as well, or you can send it to me and I'm happy to do it now. Should I email it or share my screen? If you are, have the capability to share screen, if no one else has any questions and you're comfortable to go ahead and do that, Lauren, you know how to do it down at the bottom, the square button where it's an up arrow and you can share your screen. If anyone has any questions, continue to put them into the chat and I can work with Lauren. Oh, here's my little rock star doing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close my chat. So can everyone else see Lauren's as well? Could you make it just a little bit bigger, Sue? Um, I can. Yeah, my that's good. Everyone, every, yeah. everyone can with their own. Um, yeah, that's that's beautiful right there. And Lauren, why don't you, if you're comfortable, go ahead and take yourself off from uh, mute so that we can chat about this. So Lauren has done a great job here. This is one of the things that's vitally important. Go ahead and put your pronouns right at the top if that's something that um, is, is how you wanna go ahead and indicate this information. So uh, what I would suggest is remove, uh, make your email and your LinkedIn, uh, remove them, make sure they're not live links. Specifically, if you're uploading your resume to applicant tracking systems system, it does not recognize um, live links, just so that folks know that. So for this particular, um, no uh, objective, so education, University of Connecticut, Stores, Connecticut. So for some folks, if space, again, is tight, uh, one of the things that you might wanna consider is removing this extra space in between, right? And that is, if this is done in Word, uh, it, it's uh, within the settings that you need to go ahead and set it up that way. 
Um, anticipated date of graduation, we talked about this earlier, but totally appropriate if you want to leave it on there. Uh, you can just put May 2022. Lauren's done a nice job. 3.93 GPA. Nice job, Lauren. And her major, marketing, concentration in digital marketing and analytics, minors, uh, communication, data analytics. Now, she's receiving a Bachelor of Science Business. Any comments? This is a minor, minors, so just a, a, a note here, not everyone has two, two minors. So, uh, and communications is within a, a different school but it's also a minor, so it's written out just like this. Comments, questions? Lauren, did you have anything specific about this that you were asking? Oh, no, sorry, I didn't have any like specific questions. I just you know, think it's always good to just have some, another pair of eyes just look at your resume every now and then. Okay, great. So recognitions, uh, honors program, Dean's List, New England Scholar, Babbage Scholar, Leadership Award, finalist, so this is a great example of what I was talking about earlier. So these, this is special projects, academic projects, straight up projects, FATSO integrated brand marketing plan. Um, so this is, and I happen to know this, this is the name of the, of the company. Am I correct, Lauren? FATSO? Yes, yes, okay. that's a bit of a weird name. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's where she, um, September 21 through December 21, collaborated with a team of four to propose a brand marketing plan for FATSO, a Canadian-based nut and seed butter startup. Conducted secondary research, strategic analysis, and proposed brand redesign goals and implementation program. If I'm a recruiter, this is amazing to me that know, to know that you've already done secondary research, that you so is there anything that you think you could add here, Lauren, that might provide more information for the reader? I know space is an issue, but. I'm guessing maybe like the results of like this plan, but I don't know, it was more of like a class, um, you know, like a class assignment. So I don't know if I have any like actually implementation like results, but that's what I'm thinking. Sure, I think that that's a great response. So oftentimes, one of the things that I indicate to students is this is where you could essentially put your thesis statement, right? If you were use utilize your thesis statement as just one good solid bullet statement, right? It's again, it tells the reader what did you do, how did you do it, and why. So redefining gamification and e-learning platform savvy goat. September twenty one, December twenty one. Lauren, maybe you could tell folks. Um, yeah. Did you just accept a position or an internship? I'm putting you on the spot. I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. I was kind of setting myself up for submitting my resume like this. Yeah, I just accepted um, this job uh, at Nielsen um, for post-graduation. Nice. Congratulations. So, <laughs> um, incoming member of Nielsen's I IQ's new product innovation team, providing insight to top CPG manufacturers and retailers. So this also um, goes to the earlier question about how you can go ahead and indicate and put something on the resume, right? That provides a nice overview um, that you haven't completed yet. So Lauren actually puts on here anticipated start date, uh, July 2022. So congratulations. I think that that's a really nice example of showcasing something that seems to be starting. So. UConn Center for Career Development. Um, again, a little bit different for Lauren, no, knows how to go ahead and, and create and format those bullet statements. Um, so anthology, former Blackboard, uh, Reston VA, remote community and retention marketing intern. This was a big ordeal because there's a lot of information and a, a lot of projects really, but, but well, well laid out. And so one of the things that I want to go ahead and point out here is um, what size font should your resume be in? Nice. So for never any smaller than 10, you can be as large as 12 as far as the font is concerned. Um, 
and make sure that it's consistent and it's the same font all the way through. And generally speaking, it's Times New Roman. Um, just make sure that it's totally readable. Again, there's a section of the tracking system that you just wanna make sure. Oftentimes the instructions for any applications will tell you specifically uh, fonts that it needs to be in size and that it needs to be. I just want to go ahead and point out here, and here's a lot of information. One of the things that I had stated earlier was about the skill set. So here's Lauren already has a um, shake it out of the box job and skills. No skills at the top were, were uh, laid out. So Lauren, where are your skills? Here's one of the things that I think I want to kind of point out here skills and qualifications, right? So at the bottom, but if you also notice, here's what Lauren has done within the resume itself is really the skills are dispersed within the resume and really speaks very clearly about what develop digital assets for press and social media kits for clients to promote the implementation of Blackboard products. It's dispersed without the res throughout the resume. So it's easy, it's quantified, it's readable, and it's all laid out. Um, University of Connecticut, RA, uh, utilize strong interpersonal communication, crisis management, and problem solving skills as a mentor to 40 plus students. So this question gets asked quite frequently, to be perfectly honest with you, whether or not you can use plus and minus signs, whether or not you can use personal pronouns, whether or not you can use abbreviations. So in this particular case, to showcase and quantify the fact that it's for, it's over 40 students, right? Um, up above, if you noticed, approved a $60,000 donation plan, one of the things I talked about in the very beginning was no live links. This is a live link and it takes you directly to the donation plan. So there's different ways for you to format this resume. Part of what has to happen is you have to know who you're and where you're applying. You have to know the reader. Um, you have to feel comfortable with that reader. And you know it's the format that they're gonna require. Um, but I, I think that Oftentimes, one of the things we forget to do is our is the homework and find out what the reader really wants to know and and learn about. So a live resume is totally appropriate for some students and for some specific positions, and then for others, not so much. I like this because it goes ahead and it provides what the donation plan is, and if you can link right to it. But I just wanted to make sure that I commented that because one of the things I indicated earlier was no live link. So leadership experience and involvement, um, as I indicated, this is great because in um, Lauren's situation, definitely space was an issue. So if you notice all the way down at the bottom, not a lot of room here. So had to go ahead and, and indicate that these were combined, right? Leadership and volunteer, leadership experience and involvement. So major experience, University of Connecticut marketing mentor, and skills and qualifications, computer, and then certification. Any questions, Lauren? Nice job. Congratulations again on your Any awesome. comments? Thank you so much. Yeah, um, nice. Sure. Yeah, so um for this club ascend that you know, I guess we're Currently, um, a lot of our members are currently here. I used to be the uh, VP of internal affairs um, from like starting from like April until I think like December of 2021. Um, is, do you think that there's like, I don't know, a better way that I can, I guess, like structure it so that I can also mention that, like, you know, my, my, my previous role before I stepped into the VP of marketing role here, um, I guess maybe I'd have to like kind of make it so that like, this VP of marketing, I, I could like move it to the next line or something like that. I don't know if you had any suggestions. So um, on the previous resume that we were looking at, it was actually broken out differently, right? So that it, it um, had the dates and it broke it out so that it would have said vice president down here. 
and then whatever your other position was, right, with the date. I, I think that space is an issue for you. So the only other thing that I could suggest is that after the, the header or the vice president of marketing, you could put uh, in parentheses uh, the date, right? the dates in parentheses in that way and then with additional dates over here it would show that you were you've been a member from 2021 to present list out is that answer that you would list out the name of your position with the dates yeah yes thank you i'm not so sure anyone else kathy or judy or mick if you have any suggestions about how she could quite uh sort that out with especially regarding space that's put you guys on the spot if you don't have any comments it's totally fine and i think she does have one opportunity here on it i mean it's okay now to be using yukon instead of writing out the full university of connecticut as long as you do it consistently so if it's a send yukon stores connecticut then to sue's point it could be vp of marketing 421 to present semicolon and then the other title that you were in parentheses also the, the the dates next to it because it's a beautiful transition from one position to another um, and then that that would save space on that line and and i've you know i love the fact that you have the, the upcoming job on there most people who are using a resume are applying for jobs right so they wouldn't necessarily have the the job that they've already landed and it's it's a really good reminder that you use your resume for different reasons Right, so if you were applying somewhere, you wouldn't have a job that you were about to start unless it was a specific, you know, project kind of job. But that would save you a little bit of space there where you could actually be advertising um, some of the other things that you're doing as opposed to the, the job. I want to open it up too and make sure that if anyone else has any questions, um, any comments and um, Lauren, I really appreciate you going ahead and sharing this. You've done a really nice job. I've been following you <laughs> on LinkedIn. Yes. Yes. So thank you so much, Sue. Yeah, I'll definitely um yeah, thank you so much for allowing me to share my resume. And but yeah, that's oh. if anybody else has questions, I'll just stop sharing. Well I think it's um very helpful for other individuals to go ahead and look how things are laid out. And um I think that that's vitally important. So, I, you know what, I think oftentimes it's very hard to go ahead and make that initial start of, of your resume. Um, and I, you know what, there, there's plenty of other programs out there that provide super nice guides. The, um, there is a resume, um, excuse me, a resume and cover letter guide available right through the website that you can utilize that provides lots of information regarding um, bullet statements, action statements, action verbs, um, cover letter samples. So, and obviously certainly utilize our office if anybody has any questions or concerns regarding the resume. No questions from anyone else. I just want to make sure that we have plenty of opportunities. I appreciate everybody attending today. Uh, we do hold these resume labs every Monday at one o'clock, except for next week during spring break. So I just want to make sure that you're aware of that. Um, and you're certainly welcome to go ahead and log on at any point in time. Um, if there are no additional questions, I just want to say uh, thanks everyone for joining. This has been really great and I, I appreciate um, Ascend for joining and providing the opportunity to go ahead and review some really great resumes. And I hope everyone has a stellar day and go ahead and look for us at four o'clock today for our next session of um, our business career week, which is networking tools and the elevator pitch. And we have Otis Elevator joining us in IMA and our very own Mick, uh, who's doing my colleague Mick, who will be the moderator for that session. So without further ado, folks, have a great afternoon. Hope to see you at four o'clock and stay well. Take good care. We'll speak again soon. Bye, everybody. Nice session.